Good afternoon. I'm going to review with you drawing with a grid. So in our last video, we reviewed how to apply a one inch grid to our working surface. Currently, we are working with watercolor. So I am working on a watercolor board, which is just a thick watercolor paper. Earlier, you had provided to me the size of the watercolor paper you are using and I resized and applied a grid to your self-portrait according to those measurements. Now remember when we are working with a grid what it does for us is it breaks down our large image into smaller sections which makes it easier to transfer them over and especially in this case since we're not working on a one-to-one -one ratio we are working with a smaller self-portrait grid and our drawing surface has a larger grid so this is going to help us keep our image into proportion and into scale so to review working with a grid the purpose of it is to pay attention and just concentrate on one block at a time. Now anytime we work with a grid, we want to apply just a contour line drawing of our image. We do not want to apply any type of shading or color values to our image yet. We just want to outline some important information. Now when working with a grid, and paying attention to just one box at a time, you use the corners and the lines of the grid to help you judge the placement of value changes and shapes that those value changes create in your image reference. So looking at my image here, if I were to start in this lower right corner, I would use the corners and along the lines and outer edges of the box to determine where individual value changes occur. So looking here in this top left corner of this small grid box, I have a gray shape. So I would use the corner along the line to determine how far over this gray shape starts. I would use that same corner down along the left edge to determine how far down along this line that gray shape is and it's kind of split with a lighter gray shape so as I start sketching out this shape I'm also going to use the rest of the box how far in to my box does this gray shape extend how far up or how far down inside the box does that gray shape extend so when I move to my watercolor paper, I'm going to use that information and I'm going to draw to the best of my ability that shape using a light pencil. And I am increasing the size of it because I am using the idea that that gray shape comes close to about halfway through this grid box and here's about halfway through my grid box here so I need that gray shape to extend out to that area it doesn't come very far down into my box so if this is about halfway down the left side I would say it's close to a quarter of the way down so here's about half ways down and here's about a quarter. So I'm fairly close to what I have in my original image. Now, if you've had trouble in the past drawing with a grid, here's a little tip for you. Turn it all upside down. Take your drawing board or paper and your photo reference and work with them upside down. Now the reason for this is that it sometimes tricks your brain into forgetting the exact object you are drawing and it allows it to just concentrate more on the individual boxes. So you're going to work on redrawing 
your self-portrait onto your working surface. Now as you are working through your self-portrait, remember we are working from a challenge in which you had to roll a die to determine six different categories that will make up your self-portrait. So we already discussed that the first role had to do with the placement of your camera when you took your self-portrait. And the second role involves some sort of feature. Now, obviously in my self-portrait, my second role, the feature category, I was not allowed to have my mouth in my self-portrait. So I did take a few photos. I took some with the mask on. I took some with my hands covering my mouth. I took some photographs where I did not cover up my mouth but was planning in the drawing stage to then cover up the mouth. So remember, for roll two, whatever feature you rolled, you had the option of either incorporating it in the photograph taking process or you can now work it into your drawing. So if I had taken a photograph in which my mouth was still visible, as I'm working with the drawing and working with the grid, when it came to the areas in which my mouth would have been, I would have avoided those areas for now. Another thing that I want you to consider as you are working with your grid is rolls five and roll six. So roll five was including some sort of stratagem and roll six was creating a personal mark that helps express part of you. These may be items that you would want to consider and start planning out in this drawing phase. So to kind of give you an idea of what I mean, I had completed the drawing of my self-portrait with my sweater texture and everything. So since my roll of the dice for number two included, as I mentioned before, that my mouth could not be visible and since that was already included in my photograph, I could just draw everything to the grid. But during the drawing process, as I mentioned, since you can consider rolls five and six and how you will incorporate those into your project, what I did was I thought of what item, first of all, would I use as a personal mark? And for me, with roll number five, I had the option of using words. So I got to thinking, well, how am I going to incorporate my personal mark or my personal expression with my category of words? Now, I do have a lot of empty space in the background. And that's another thing I wanted to mention to you. If your background doesn't have anything to do with telling the story of who you are, you can eliminate the background and use your other roles to help fill in that space. Where I was located while taking my photograph, it was a empty wall behind me. So there wasn't anything on it to really eliminate in the drawing process. Now I could come in with my graph and sketch out items I may want to use for my fifth and sixth roll, but I got to thinking about this space down here. I like that my eyes are reacting to something down below. 
and I thought, well, maybe this would be a nice place for me to incorporate my personal mark and the words that I have to incorporate into my design. So I took a piece of paper and I just kind of roughly cut to what I thought would fit in that area. And I thought about something that I know to people who know me, my family, my friends identify me. And that is my love of lilies. Lilies are my favorite flower. When I'm in a store, you have to practically drag me away from purchasing a new lily. No matter how many lilies I have, I am of the thought that I can have a few more. So by taking this piece of paper and laying it in an area where I think I may alter my photograph, I was able to kind of sketch out some ideas of what it may look like if I did replace my sweater texture with some lilies. And I was liking how this looked. So what I did was I took a, another sheet of paper and I redrew my self portrait. And this time I started to add the lilies there. And since I had to incorporate words, I decided to have them as descriptive words. And since my self portrait can be not only an expression of how I see myself or how I want the world to see me, it can also be a reflection on how others may see me. So I went to social media and I asked my friends, hey, if you could describe me in one word, what would that word be? And so I have been slowly taking the words that they responded with and I've been incorporating them into my bouquet of flowers. I see it as not only a representation of my favorite flower, how much they mean to me, because there is some personal reasons why I love lilies, but I incorporated the words into areas like the leaves, into some of the buds of lilies, because I saw it as kind of a garden of characteristics characteristics that people that mean something to me see about me. And I like that it's kind of a nice remembrance that no matter how hard I can be on myself at times or the good qualities I see in myself also, it's always nice to know that people you care about see certain things about you and positive things about you. So this has now become an area where it not only reflects a personal love of lilies and the emotional meaning they have to me, but now it also incorporates the words that family and friends associate with me as a person. So that's the beginning of my self portrait. I haven't figured out yet what I'm doing with the background. That is something I will continue to work on. There are some other parts of our self portrait that I still had to incorporate into the project. One of which is my surprise. And I rolled repetition for that. And I kind of have an idea of what I might do with repetition. But for now, this is my beginnings of the drawing stage and close to the end, actually. So I used the grid to draw my self portrait. I drew my hair, my eyes, my glasses, my hands, the sleeves with the sweater texture, all to the grid. And all I did was avoid drawing the sweater texture in here and instead replaced it with my roll five and six. So this is something I want you to consider as you draw your self portrait. 
how can you take and incorporate in the drawing phase roll two if you were not able to incorporate it during the photo taking process roll five and roll six on your key sheet So that is the process in which I want you to work through. I want you to consider the overall expression you would like to give of your self-portrait, how you are going to still use composition and spacing, and some of your elements from the challenge into the drawing phase and what other elements will you have to save or work with in the painting stage. So with that, I hope I've given you something to think about when it comes to the drawing phase of your project. I hope it is enough of a review to working with a grid for when you begin the drawing process. And I will see you when we go to talk about the next phase of our project, which will of course be beginning the painting part. Have a good day.